Hi there, this is Alvin, and welcome to the Kickstart Commerce Podcast, where we share search marketing and domain name investing strategies to help grow your business. In today's episode, I'll share a few thoughts pertaining to domain investing and guarding against economic downturn. Of course, there's not a silver bullet answer outside of don't invest in domain names at all. And while that is an option, and while it saves time and money, it's also not domain investing. Nevertheless, today's podcast aims to highlight and address safeguard methods and strategies to sustain a domain investing portfolio before, during, and after economic downturn. So let's not waste any more time and dive into the details. One of the first uh, methods or strategies, one is just keeping cash on hand. And, And when I say cash on hand, oftentimes I believe you know, especially new domain investors, they'll often use uh, what I call or deem household operating capital. So they'll use funds that is really likely earmarked, you know, for groceries, um, mortgage, rent, car notes, uh, just necessity of, of, of living or the expenses of, uh, of a person's livelihood. And so I, I encourage you not to use what I, like I said, household operating income to domain invest, I I actually encourage you to set aside cash that is outside of that operating um, income that come that, you know, that you receive, whether it be from a daytime job or what have you. So if you're a part-time domainer, um, you know, you, you want to be able to have funds that are set aside uh, as savings, and that's not personal savings. That's actually the hobby or the actual business savings um, or operating cash flow. And one of the reasons that I recommend, you know, stacking the cash reserve is um, one, it places you in an opportunity for, you know, let's say that there are domain investors that when the economic downturn happens, just like it did almost a decade ago, uh, roughly between that 2007, 2009 time frame, um, there were many domain investors who were basically fire selling their portfolios. So domains that are likely, you know, 2,500, hey, you never know, you may be able to get them for anywhere from 250 and that's real low. Um, but likely in that range of, you know, 500, seven hundred fifty dollars that they they'll take that loss because, you know, ultimately they didn't have a strategy outside of household operating income that would allow them to weather the storm. And so, you know, to a certain extent, one man's uh, misfortune is another man's treasure. So one man's trash is another man's treasure. And, And oftentimes, not to say that you know, hey, you're buying the trash of someone else, but it, it's through a downfall that oftentimes, you know, you can actually glean a uh, a gem of a domain, if not domains, um, based upon, you know, whether or not what the need of that person is. Um, I've been contacted before, uh, like I said, roughly probably about eight to nine, maybe even 10 years ago, when uh, the economic downturn happened, the Great Recession, and you know people were willing to give. They're selling their entire portfolio, uh, and we're talking about sometimes names that probably would have averaged maybe two hundred fifty dollars, three hundred dollars um, a domain. You know they're down in in an area of maybe twenty five to fifty dollars. Um, and so for me, I decided to weather the storm, not even make the purchase, and. You know, fortunately, I don't know if if some of them are still around. I've not looked to see, but I would imagine that, you know, they end up dropping their domains and losing all the money as a sunk cost to what they invested in. So it's important that you realize that you stack cash reserves. Now, um, an interesting way to do that is if you already have sales. So if you're starting out, you likely probably don't have a sale. But if you are and you're getting pretty consistent sales, so like, for instance, uh, right now, um, I'm getting consistent sales in, in in regards of names that are on average, you know, bringing in anywhere from twenty seven hundred to um, thirty five hundred dollars per name. And so what I've done is dedicated or set aside a set percentage of each domain sale for taxes as well as to reinvest um, into a, an equivalent or greater name uh, domain name. 
And so I, I definitely recommend doing that and that you're not doing what's called eating your seed. So in terms of uh, making that sale, if you made if you made a sale and netted, you know, a couple thousand dollars, don't go spend all that thousand on, um, you know, just a, a standard of living or um, on, I, I guess you'd say, toys or, uh, you know, any. Any, anything that, that, that isn't um, an asset, you know, you want to you wanna make sure that you can actually reinvest into your business and actually take it to its next level. So, you know, establish and set aside a percentage of domain sales to invest. The other thing is uh, set aside non-domain sale cash. And so, you know, to a certain extent, just like you should be doing in terms of saving at a personal level, um, you could, you know, calculate in and say, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to take from an operating household income and save, you know, a hundred dollars a month, two hundred dollars a month. That will go towards uh, the the business saving wise, not. Hey, I'm going to take this hundred, two hundred, and spend it, uh, or to invest in a domain. It's just something that over time that will become a built-in nest egg for the business. So, you know, like I said stack that cash reserve uh, because you never know what types of deals you can come across when economic downturn um, happens. Either you know before, during, or after. The next thing um, that I also recommend doing, highly recommend doing, is renewing domains and domain-related services for three years or more. Um, in most cases, most uh, you know economic downturns are, are likely not going to last more than you know three years. If it is, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty drastic. Um, but that being said, it's not going to last, you know, beyond that three year period of time. And so often this is the case what I do with developed sites that I have that have hosting packages, I will um, renew or purchase the package at a three year commitment. And so I pay for it three years in advance so that should something happen, I don't have to worry or concern myself with Oh my goodness! I have all these different hosting packages. How are how are we going to pay for them? Um, no, especially in you know today's current market, which talk is, hey, there's going to be an economic downturn. Nobody knows the time, day, or what happens, but there's just a lot of talk um, and hype around. Hey, it's coming. It's been ten years since the Great Recession. It's got to correct at some point. And so the best thing now is to you know, say that you go out and you renew your hosting package or your domains for three years. I mean, that puts you um, all the way out to, you know, 2022. And by that time, hopefully we're beyond um, the worst part of the economic downturn should one happen. So, you know, hosting services, email services, even SL SSL certificates or services. And by the way, speaking of SSL, you can actually use Let's Encrypt. So let's, L-E-T-S, encrypt.org. They offer free um, SSL cert certificates. So it may behoove you to uh, save money by, you know, moving from paid SSL certificates to Let's Encrypt um, SSL certificates. So you know, renewing those domains, renewing domain related services for three or more years is one way to guard against economic downturn. Another way is uh, seeking alternative payment methods and plans when you have domain sales. And so oftentimes you may um, run across a deal that you may be looking to barter with a domain. So someone wants one of your domains and they may have a portfolio. And so you may be able to use like Domain IQ um, to look up that person's portfolio and, and basically do a barter or trade um, of a domain of equivalent value perceived value, if you will, with that with that other domain investor or owner, um, you know, try to strike that deal. And that way, one, no cash is exchanged, but you can sit on top of, um, you know, especially if it, if it works out that the, the domain that you trade it for, so the one you receive 
actually goes on to be uh, or do better than what you probably would have expected for the one you traded. So that can always work out to be a good deal. Um, there's been talk of even uh, domain investors opting for Bitcoin and just cryptocurrency, um, and that could be an alternative source. I've not dabbled in that, and so I can't necessarily say whether or not what's good, what's bad, but it could be, you know, if, um, or rather when they say Bitcoin and crypto currencies uh, actually become mainstream, if you will, in terms of being used as payment options, that could work out for you. Uh, one of the next things um, to do in terms of payment, alternative payment methods and, and plans is offering 12 to 36 month uh, payment plans. Uh, I know that those are pretty long. Most people only typically want to deal with like a six to 12 month window of payments. And typically they're wanting down payments on that. Uh, but let's just say that, you know, long the long haul is you want to sell, you want someone in on an agreement, and if push comes to shove, you can write into the agreement that, hey, if this person defaults on their payments, the domain comes back to you and you don't owe them anything back. So, you know, all payments, um, they, they are, it is what it is. Hey, they made the payment. They defaulted, you get the domain and you keep the payments. So you could go the longer route um, and you could, you could do that. And that actually builds in that residual income. Although it's a little bit less, it's less, it's actually the same amount, but just spread out over time. So you're just seeing micro payments being made over the course of time. And so you get a few of those, then you can build um, basically, you know, a passive income, if you will. And so uh, the last one is, I know, like I mentioned, in most payment plans, there is a down payment. You could also offer a no down payment plan and just basically say, hey, you all uh, pay for this monthly. And if there's a default before you get to the end of the payment, then you essentially, um, you know, take on reclaim ownership of the domain as well as uh, any payments made. So go with a, a you could go with a, a down payment option, but you could also sweeten the pot by just saying, hey, keep your down payment and just begin to pay us monthly and we'll figure it out, you know, once once that last payment is made. So that being said, seek to have alternative payment methods and plans for uh, your domain sales. The next thing um, to help guard against uh, economic downturn is eliminating or liquidating a percentage of your domain portfolio. And this is something that, quite honestly, all domain investors should be doing if not on an annual basis, then certainly you want to get to this. You know, I, I typically go through and do it on a quarterly basis of looking through grading and prioritizing um, domains within the portfolio. I mean, you can sometimes, especially like when it, when the chips uh, were hot, so the four four character or four L uh, domains were hot. You know, I wound up with probably 10 to 15 of those that, you know, at the end of this, when it all kind of hit the fan, there were a few that, you know, that I knew that didn't have really lucrative letters in them, uh, contained in them. So I let those go. Uh, and then I sold the ones that I could sell. Um, and I think I sold those for like 1500 each. And so it worked out well, but there comes a time when a, a certain trend fad hits the fan that you just got to cut bait and let go. And so by grading and prioritizing your portfolio, that will allow you, uh, one, to, uh, I guess you say, reduce the size of the hole that's in your wallet, that if you are bleeding money, um, from just having those domains renew, then, you know, you just have to basically emotionally cut bait and just go, hey, I thought that this given domain was going to perform by X amount of time. We got to that time. It didn't. We got to let it go. Um, and you're likely going to see a host of domains that you're going to let go. You'll likely see them sold somewhere else and you'll probably kick yourself. But then I go, what if they don't sell? You're going to kick yourself anyway because you're losing money um, and your wallet is realizing that loss uh, as well as your domain portfolio when you could have had that money and invested it into a domain of um, greater value or that would bring you greater value. 
So one way to do this um, is either by looking at the lower 10% or even as high as 20% um, of your portfolio. Just say, hey, these are the domains. I know that um, I heard at least in one case that one do domain investor is using uh, GoDaddy's estimated value, which I, I personally don't use that and wouldn't use that. Um, but, you know, he feels that that um, that it's worth that it's I, I guess of some value add to his strategy and so based upon that uh, you know he aligns his his domain portfolio he looks through and if it's of you know a certain value hey let's say if it's below 1500 you know he axes those 1500 and below and that's it you know and it's and, and to me I've I've seen names that were like eight nine hundred that GoDaddy estimated, and I've sold those, um, you know, like I said, for anywhere between twenty seven hundred to thirty five hundred dollars. And so, it, trying to go by what GoDaddy uh, states as the estimated value again, it's only an estimate. So that is a way, um, although I don't necessarily. Um, uh, I guess you'd say recommend that approach, but it is an approach uh, that some that some may be worth you know considering. Uh, I know that in some cases there are uh, times that you can also look at you know if you're looking at a lower twenty percent um, or ten percent by however you you know want to grade those whether it's good Addy appraisal or just your own intuition and feeling about this given name there are a lot of names that you know people will fire sell for anywhere sometimes fifty dollars and you know a hundred dollars two hundred fifty dollars that they just put them out there and they let them go um and then as they let them go the one thing that happens is they don't um they disable the auto renew on it and then set the price send it to auction or platform and if it sells it sells great it'll likely pay for um, additional renewals um, and, it, and you know and if it doesn't it doesn't and you don't renew it and it goes out and that's the end of that me personally i wish that uh, the marketplaces um, would allow for a percentage so if you allow for a domain name to expire from your portfolio purposely what I wish or hope for um, for marketplaces is that they would since they're going to auction it off so in this case let's say it's a GoDaddy expired domain auction and you previously owned that domain whatever you know they gain from it so if that's an auction that gains seven hundred fifty dollars maybe you know there is some sort of five percent kickback on that of going, hey, because you allow this thing to expire, it went on to auction, it performed well uh, at $750, we're gonna give you 5% of that. Um, that may be a pipe dream um, or a rocket ship ride to the moon, um, but it's something worth considering for domain marketplaces. Um, and it's something that, you know, that us as a domain investors, you know, should probably uh, force, so. Nevertheless, um, you know, eliminating or liquidating either your lowest 20% of your uh, portfolio by not renewing or just offering like a fire side uh, or, fire, or fire sell of domain names, that is an option for guarding against economic downturn. The other uh, option, another option rather, is leasing or developing two to three domains from your portfolio every uh, three years. And so it, it, it's gonna take some time. I know a lot of domain investors, uh, they just say, hey, we don't, we don't have the expertise or I just don't have the technical mindset to set up servers, websites, write content. And it does take, you know, it does take special people. Although I will say, if you have the money to invest in domain names to the thousands, you could easily use Upwork and hire uh, writers who can, um, like in my case, I, I'll hire writers and I'll give them an outline. Hey, go research this for me. They send it back. I'm not looking for it to be perfect. I'm looking for it 
to have enough substance there that then I can actually edit and apply my own voice to it and then uh, put the content out there on the website, let it sit. And if Google comes in, they, you know, they and ranks the site, great. If it doesn't happen, well, it's just a couple, you know, a couple hundred bucks that I spent and I've uh, purchased domains that are likely way more expensive than that. Uh, so, you know, when you think about leasing and developing, you also want to think about, you know, a little money being better than no money, especially when it comes to leasing. And so if you can lease something for twenty five, fifty, a hundred dollars or more per month and you get a couple of sites going like that, that, you know, hey, that's renewals. Um, you can argue uh, whatever you want to argue. And I go at the end of the day, if you have a little bit coming in, that can definitely, it may not pay for all of your renewals, but it'll pay for a portion, a good portion at that. Um, the other thing about development, you could develop hyper niche or niche, uh, niche domain, geo domain sites. And so I've done that before I've developed, I had like a firewood website, roundrockfirewood.com. Although, um, none of these sites are, are up anymore, but I, I had them going and was doing lead generation, uh, for them as well as round rock AC repair. I did an AC repair, uh, website, probably about a five to 10 page website that ranked very well. Um, and at one point was bringing in uh, $1,800 a month. And so you look at, at that, and then I think I also did a, uh, what else was it? A sprinkler repair um, lead gen to where people who are having issues with their sprinkler systems um, could go to a site, submit a form, and then that form would get copied to myself as well as to the partner of choice that I was working with. But nevertheless, those sites worked out and, you know, they aren't million dollar sites, but at the same time, they do bring in, uh, you know, anywhere from ten to $15,000 a year and you're not doing anything, but ultimately ensuring that the person does the work um, and that, you know, that they're getting the leads, which in most case, it's either email or um, you're using some sort of like Google voice number that you can actually track phone calls that were uh, made to the partner that's, uh, you know, delivering the service. So develop hyper niche or, or geo domain websites. You could also, um, maybe partner with someone I'm in, I'm in talks right now, partnering with a writer for an informational, uh, website that we're basically going to split the affiliate income from it. Uh, he's the writer, but I bring kind of the technical back background to, to uh to the table in terms of being able to set up uh websites pretty quick um and then get the, getting them ranked uh with the content that you know he's going to produce another is uh developing simple lead gen you know websites like i mentioned and so you know whether it's garage door repair it you you want to do high margin um services you know you don't want to get into like nail salons pet sitting um child care and none, none of those things you want to get more into higher end uh lead gen to where oftentimes what i tell most people to do is go and look at how expensive the keywords are if you can get into a double digit uh keyword then you know that a, a company is going to be willing to pay you quite a bit for the lead because they make quite a bit or they net um, a bit of profit, quite a bit of profit from such leads. So if you can get into the higher margin websites or businesses uh, and do websites for those that are lead gen, then this will help offset um, any costs with your domain portfolio. And then last but not, not least is um, <clears throat> really focusing on small or startup domains. And so one way of doing this is, is establishing, you know, relationships with startup incubators, especially those that are locally based where you live. And so we all know that during economic downtimes, because of layoffs, firings, um, and just downsizing period, that more businesses get started. And with that, more people are likely to look at buying a domain name 
um, because th they're willing one because they have either they have no other leads, so they're down to their last dime of going. I've got to make this work, and they're actually willing to spend, um, you know, a couple a couple thousand to two thousand, three thousand dollars on a domain name for a given idea because they know that nothing else is is out there, and so you know by forming relationships with startup incubators, then that'll help you to get um, those domains in front of people. Now, that being said, be sure that your domains are likely, in most cases, either one or especially in, in, the, in the area of startups, two-word domains. You don't want to try to take three, four, five-word domains um, in the startup incubators. Mm, that's just not going to be a good look for you. And so, if you focus in on the sweet spot of two words um, making sense and typically verb noun and not noun noun or verb verb, um, you want to just focus on the verb now. And if you can get that and, and get a good good size portfolio going and relationships in, then those um, relationships, whether it be with startup incubators or even sites um, like Brand Bucket, uh, you know, you can go list there. Now, obviously, there's going to be a, um, a fee associated with Brand Bucket, but hey, the whole name of the game is moving the uh, given domain. And so, at the end of the day, you know, like I said, you want to focus on small to medium sized business or startup domain names and then work with uh, startup incubators. So like here in Austin, we have uh, Capital Factory, I believe uh, Tech Ranch Austin is another Launch Lab is another. And then uh, what else? Let's see here. Tech Stars. Um, incubation station, dream adventures, or even uh, in some cases, although it, it's kind of, I mean, this is just, it, it, this is a blast from the past, but even chamber of commerce, in some cases, you can actually go through there, begin to look at businesses, look at their websites, and then, you know, try to see if there's an upgrade opportunity available, uh, either via handreg or even expired domain that you could then pitch to that company and go, hey, this is um, an investment that's likely going to help your company gain greater visibility um, in the online space. So, that being said, um, in closing, you know, no one knows the exact time, day, or, um, you know, that an, an, an economic downturn will occur, or, or even if, you know, how long one will last. And while we may not know all these details, we can prudently perform our due diligent actions uh, critical to guarding and protecting our domain portfolios and livelihoods. So, you know, like I said, just to kind of recap here, remember that you want to stack cash reserves, that you want to renew domain, domain related services for three or more years. You want to seek alternative payment methods and plans for domain sales. Um, and, and always you want to eliminate or liquidate a percentage of your domain portfolio annually uh, or look to lease or develop two to three domains from your portfolio every you know, three years. Focus on small to medium or startup domains and then establish relationships with startup incubators and especially those that are local uh, to you. And so with that, we're out of time. So thank you listeners for tuning in to Kickstart Commerce, where we share search marketing and domain name strategies to help grow your business. Please subscribe to this podcast via iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or Podbean. Last but not least, please visit kickstartcommerce.com to subscribe to the weekly newsletter sharing tips and tricks about the disciplines of digital strategy. Thanks, and that's all for now. Oh,